two musicians. I love getting a lot of attention, but not from the sound booth. <laughs> In just a moment, we get to officially uh, install our, our two new mu musicians uh, this morning, and so grateful for, for that. Um, I'm Pastor Joel, and um, whether you are here with us in person or joining us by Zoom, we welcome you. I'm grateful that you're here and grateful for this opportunity for us to be gathered in worship, even across the distances. Today is the fifth Sunday in the Easter season. Um, it's hard sometimes to imagine, to realize and remember that we're still in, that, in the Easter season, the further we get away from it. Um, but all that we see going on in the world and perhaps what's going on in your life is, is all the more that, to remember that and remember the promise of resurrection in our lives today. So I invite you to hear that in our worship. Our theme through the, this season has been living in the love of God as our scriptures from 1 John in worship have been focusing on these important themes of what it looks like, uh, what resurrection life looks like. To, as we follow the risen Christ. And so today we're going to be hearing about the perfect love of God in the resurrection. On the first Sunday of the month, we celebrate Holy Communion. Um, and soon, I believe during the summer, we'll be starting to do this every Sunday again. A number of you have asked about that. We've been doing this just because it was, it's been difficult over this last year to figure out how do we do this as so many people are joining us by Zoom. Um, real presence, we've learned in this last year, God's real presence happens. There is no virtual worship. It is real. And God's presence is real. And so we'll, we'll be doing that. But for now, we, we continue to do it on the first Sunday. And this is the first Sunday. So we get to celebrate Holy Communion. Um, if you're joining us, especially by, by Zoom, um, and you can't be, be with us here physically, hopefully in just a moment, or if, if you don't already have those supplies ready in a moment, um, you can do that. Go and get some bread or crackers, some wine or grape juice or, or even water. Jesus turned water into wine. And for those of you who are here in the sanctuary, if you're going to be um, receiving Holy Communion with us, hopefully you received um, a little packet with the, the wafers and the grape juice here. And if not, just wave your hand and we'll make sure and I'll toss, no, um, <laughs> we'll make sure you get them. So as we prepare for worship, especially with those of you who are joining us from home or wherever you are on Zoom, um, I know that it's easy to get kind of distracted. And so we, we encourage you to uh, recognize this as a holy time for worship. And so um, if you have a candle nearby, invite you to, to light that as you invite Christ's light into your life and into your worship, just as we have these candles by the altar lit. Or you can take a Bible and open that and, and set that into your presence to invite God's word to speak to you in this time. So now I'm going to invite David and Ryan to come on up. We're gonna, we thought we would start worship with installing them and you know having new beginnings right here so that we can recognize um, their work and God's work through them in our music ministry. It's been said that when you sing, you pray twice. And so today we give thanks for the call and the ministry of Dr. David Dunbar and Ryan Marvel uh, to here to Zion, whose call and gifts are to lead us in worship and to draw us into song as we lift our voices and our praise to God. David has been called to serve as our director of music and worship as well as the organist. You heard him play that prelude just a moment ago. He'll be our chancel choir director and the band leader in our contemporary worship. Ryan has been called to serve as Zion's accompanist and collaborative artist. 
which primarily means he's going to be accompanying the choir when they sing. Um, occasionally, he'll be he'll be accompanying the band uh, when they. Uh, he won't be doing that every week, but occasionally, and we may be blessed to hear him play on other occasions as well. Many of you have heard Ryan play already as he started playing with us uh, about midway through the Lenten season. So we're really thankful that he was there for us in that time. As I begin, I wanna, um, I also want to acknowledge and give thanks for the search team. They really didn't have to do a lot of work to bring Ryan here because he was already here with us. This was just a gift of God that was dropped into our presence. So thank you. Um, the search team um, helped uh, interview with David and bring him in. And th that was made up of Aaron Bachman, Noel Bauman, of course, Maddie Elder, Eileen Huddle, Cindy Kurtz, Janie Lichtfuss, Tom Robinson, and Ruth Sprain. And I'm grateful for their leadership and their presence. And many of you are here this morning, so thank you. So just to give you a little bit of background, I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible, but at the same time, I want you to get to know know these two a little as much as possible. Um, hopefully soon there will be times where you might be able to, to meet with them in person and face to face. But David comes to us most recently from First United Methodist Church here in Loveland. Um, but he also has vast experience in uh, church music leadership. He has a doctorate of musical arts and conducting, a master of music and orchestral conducting, a bachelor's in choral music education. Am I getting all this right? <laughs> um, and it goes on and on. He even has professional certification for scoring motion pictures and TV. Um, so that's not it. That just scratches the surface. I can't say uh, what both of them have done and how each of them are qualified enough. There's so much to their resumes. Ryan is a pianist, a composer, an arranger. He has uh, a private, a full private studio in his home where he has le uh, offers lessons. Um, is the pianist for Colorado Women of Song and often plays concerts in homes and in churches. So uh, he's recorded and released six different albums, um, solo piano albums, has scored several different do uh, documentary projects. I, I thought it was interesting, most recently a project with the New York Times, so impressive. <laughs> um, so you can see, understand that we are very fortunate to have two incredibly gifted musicians joining our staff to lead worship with us. But most importantly, I know I ex have experienced this and uh, hope that you have or will. Most importantly, they come with a passion for worship music. Um, whether with the organ, the choir, the piano, the, the band, or, or just helping all of us to lift our voices in praise to God. Uh, they come with that, and so we are grateful for that. And so, um, David and Ryan, both of you, I ask you, in the presence of this assembly, those who are here in person and many who gather with us by Zoom, will you commit yourself to this new trust and this new responsibility in the confidence that it comes from God? If so, say, I will, and ask God to help me. All right. Will you carry out this ministry in accordance with the Holy Scriptures and with inspiring worship that turns our hearts to love God and serve our neighbor? If so, say, I will, and I ask God to help me. They're saying it. <laughs> if you're in doubt. <laughs> I know, they're wearing masks. Trusting in God's care. Will you seek to grow in love for those you serve to pray for them, to strive for excellence in all you do, and adorn the gospel of Jesus with a godly life? If so, say, I will, and I ask God to help me. May Almighty God, who has given you the will and certainly the gifts to do all these things, graciously give you the strength and the compassion to perform them. 
Amen. And so for all of you, people of God, and those of you who are joining us by Zoom as well, we can hear you speak through, even through that. Um, will you receive Dr. David Dunbar and Ryan Marvel into this ministry as ones who are sent to serve in the church of Jesus Christ? If so, say we will and we ask God to help us. Will you pray for them? Will you help honor them for their work's sake? And in all things, strive to live together in the peace and unity of Christ. If so, say we will and we, help, we ask God to help us. Let us pray. O God of majesty, whom all the saints and angels delight to worship, we ask that you strengthen and bless your servants, David and Ryan, who through your gift of music seek to enliven our praises and proclaim your word with power and grace. Through this ministry, give us all awareness of your beauty and your grace and join our voices with all the choirs of, of heaven. We pray this through your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. So David and Ryan, I now, you know, as if anything needs to be officially said, this was it, right? I now declare to you, uh, uh, Zion's director of music and worship, our organist, our chancel choir director and band lead leader, and as our accompanist and collaborative artist. May God Almighty bless you and keep you in all that you do, and especially in these ministries of music. Amen. So people of God, I, yeah. Let's <laughs> we give thanks, certainly. So thank you both for being with us. And thank you for playing and singing. <laughs> And now I invite you, if you're here in the congregation, if you're as you're able, if, if you'll stand, we begin worship bringing all that we have, our, the best and the worst, um, and bringing that before God and one another, confessing our brokenness and hearing God's promise of forgiveness. Most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not shown love for each other with our actions and our words. In your compassion, forgive our sin and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our light and our truth. Amen. Friends in Christ, with joy, I proclaim to you that almighty God who is rich in mercy and abundant in love forgives you all your sins and grants you newness of life in the name of Jesus Christ. So freed from the power of sin in all you do, live in the love of God. Amen. No, this is Easter. We got to go back to that. Sorry. <laughs> Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Great God, your love has called us here as we by love for love were made. Your loving likeness still we bear from our dishonored disobedience.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. O oh God of great love, we're gathered into your presence this morning, aware of, of our human frailty, and yet overwhelmed by your love for us. We give you thanks that there is no human experience we might walk through where your love cannot reach us. Teach us today to love you more, just as you first loved us. And help us to show your love to others. A sacrificial, selfless, perfect love shown to us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Let's start by making ourselves with the sign of the cross. God be on my head, God be on my heart, God be on my left, and God be on my right. Last week, we focused on living in the love of God as you celebrated May Day. In the chat feature in, on Zoom, or if you're here with us, please share one way that you showed kindness to a neighbor. Here in worship, what are some ways that you did that? We took some flowers to my Oma and Opa and some of our friends. Everyone was really happy to get the flowers and that we thought of them. Did anyone in the congregation have a story to share about May Day? It's the fun of having a movable microphone. Yes, we have several neighbors that have been so helpful to us in the past. And so we thought we'd bring back this uh, thing about, you know, going to the neighbors. Only we didn't knock on the door and run. I'm afraid I might not have made it across the street. Well, anyway, so we gathered, Harriet and I, I guess I speak for her too. Uh, She did it for our neighbor to the north, Tom. And uh, I did for the neighbor across the street and our neighbors next door who are moving, and we're going to be so sad to see them go. I just put a whole bunch of different kinds of candy in, and they all remembered that they used to do this on May Day. So I thought that was really a joy to bring it back. Thank you for the reminder last week. That was great. Yeah, when we went to deliver flowers, Shyla specifically said, I don't ding-dong ditch. So we also did not run away. Did anyone else have a story? I took a neighbor out yesterday morning for her birthday to uh, a breakfast, but it was a double uh, gift because the waitress came to our table and told us that someone had paid for our breakfast. So it was a double uh, treat. That's super special too. Did anyone else want to share? Okay, that works great. So this week in our lesson, we hear that those who love God love their brothers and sisters well. So you may think it's funny that us two only children here are going to tell you about loving your brothers and sisters well. But we're not just talking about the people in your families. We're focusing on loving our brothers and sisters in Christ. Sometimes, especially this past year, we've become separated from our family and our church family, not because we want to, but because we've been sharing or showing love by keeping each other safe. While we can't always be physically near our loved ones, like family, friends, or church family, we can still show love to them. This week, this week, as we live in the love of God, Sorry, technical difficulties. This week, as we live in the love of God, 
we will reach out to a loved one. We can call our family, friends, and church family that we haven't talked to in a while. If you're like me, you don't really like talking on the phone. So if it's more comfortable for you, you can show uh, you can show love by sending a card, text message, or other type of message to someone you haven't seen in a while. Next week, we will invite you in Zoom or in the sanctuary to show how you loved as we... Um, reach out and loved to a loved one. Let us pray. Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for teaching me to love others through your example. Help me to show your love in all that I do. And God's people say. Thank you both. Um, we're going to do our memory verse song. And I remembered my ukulele this week, but I still want you to clap the rhythm that we tried last week. So um, the words are, beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. And everyone who loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Those who loveth not, knoweth not God, but God is love. Beloved, let us love one another. So the other than the clapping three times, you're going to do this rhythm. So it'll be one. Can you clap that with me? And here we go. And one. Good. Don't let me mess you up. Beloved. Let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone who loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He who loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Beloved, let us love one another. First John 4, 7, and 8. Good, let's do that one more time. Ready? And uh, here we go. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God and everyone who loveth is born of God and knoweth God he who loveth not knoweth not God for God is love beloved let us love one another first John 4 7 and 8 Our scripture reading this morning is from 1 John chapter 4, and we get to hear what we just sang, uh, verses 7 through 21. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love. Not that we loved God, but that God loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. 
If we love one another, God lives in us and God's love is perfected in us. By this, we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the father has sent his son as the savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the son of God and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not, re- has, has not reached perfection in love. We love because God first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Just need a water break real quick. Friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God, who is our divine lover, the beloved, and the love that is between them. Amen. If someone asked you who God is to you, what adjectives would you use? I mean, there are so many ways that we understand God, so many ways that the Bible even describes God. God is creator. God is life and light. God is our protector, our help, our Lord, our King. God is, you could fill in the blanks with so many things. How do you describe God? The writer of 1 John could have chosen any of these and many, many more to describe God. But with amazing efficiency, we heard God described with three simple words. God is love. And 1 John is not alone in this. In spite of all the many ways that the Bible describes God, that primary and most common, most important identification all throughout is God is love. In 1 Corinthians, it's, uh, which is often known by many people as, as the love passage in the Bible, the love chapter, Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they'll cease. Where there are tongues, those will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. And yet all, yet though these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Describing God as love and naming love as the greatest, it doesn't mean that all those other ways that we describe God are wrong but it does mean that any other way we understand God should be viewed through that most important primary lens of love. If the ways that we understand God and, and our behavior that we, that we put on God or on us as people of God are not showing love, there might be something wrong. <laughs> well, 1 John was written to a struggling faith community. 
there were arguments and there were splits in the community. And so the book deals with how believers should handle differences in how they understand God and in how they treat each other people. And so the writer of First John says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. Think about how funny this sounds. I mean, you know, this sounds pretty, pretty obvious. It sounds nice and flowery, but, but in the midst of a conflict, you're, you're in an argument with someone, you're trying to make an important decision, whether it's in work or family or in your church even, you argue, you debate, you listen to each other, you discuss something endlessly. <laughs> Maybe you pray about it. But no matter what you do, you can't come to an agreement Neither side will be convinced by the other. No one changes their minds. And so the arguments just continue perpetually. Maybe there's no argument anymore. Maybe you just draw that proverbial line in the sand and, and exist with this constant tension. We build up walls, literally and figuratively, between the two sides. We cast stones. We maybe choose to ignore each other. Or here at church, we might start a new church or go to a different one with those that we, we would probably more likely agree with, <laughs> at least for now. People are divided. But then... Imagine with me that, that you're in this conflict and then suddenly out of the blue, someone says, hey, I got an idea. Why don't we try love? <laughs> well, gosh, why didn't I think of that? Rarely do we think of love as the answer to our most contentious issues. And honestly, maybe it's not. If we're trying actually, because it, with contentious issues, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get, a get to a place where, where everyone is happy and everyone agrees with each other, right? But that's not what love is about. Love isn't a, a feeling or an emotion that we have for people where, where we're in full agreement. Love is a choice. It's a commitment. It's an action that doesn't try to make sure that we all are in agreement or exactly alike in any way, but it's a choice to see each other as God sees us. First John says, in this is love. Not that, not that we loved God, but, but that God loved us and sent God's Son. Jesus came into a world where there was great division and anger and fear. And the perfect love of God that Jesus showed, it didn't solve all the problems. It didn't take away all the divisions, all the different arguments. In fact, in love, Jesus gave himself to all that. Jesus gave himself to people's anger and hatred, and, and maybe even some of them were well-meaning about it, their righteous intentions. But this kind of love that Jesus showed has a way of exposing our own brokenness and our inability to love as God loves, our inability to understand God fully. And so for all this, Jesus was put to death crucified, an image of God's self-giving, perfect act of love. But still, people weren't suddenly happy and in an agreement with each other. And yet that act of love, God's choice, God's commitment, God's action showed that love is always the path to take. Even today, when we're arguing Maybe here in the church, it might be about budget issues, you know, how, how to use our, the funds that we've been gifted most wisely as people of God. Or maybe you have a disagreement with a neighbor or family member, or even in the divisions in our country, or the divisions between nations. Love is always the answer. It's not always the easy answer. And it's not always going to get us to a solution where we're in full agreement with each other. Some people are more difficult to love than others. 
but love is still the answer. Some people seem to have a deficiency for love and they find it hard to show love. Maybe they lash out and hurt others from their own pain. I don't want to love people who treat me poorly or who insist on being right in a disagreement or who just, who just don't even take the time to get to know me or understand me. I don't want to do that. And yet love is the answer. It's not always the easy answer. We don't always know what love should look like. For example, if a loved one struggles with, with a, an addiction or a mental health issue, it's, it's, is it more loving for us to confront someone you, that we know needs help to find it? Or is it more loving to, to let them learn and give them a safe place to land when they struggle? Parents know this kind of thing. When kids are making poor choices, parents often struggle to agree whether it's more loving to, to punish children in hopes that they're going to learn a lesson, or is it more loving to, to let them learn the hard way and be there to support them? We may not always know what love should look like. I believe that there's really no wrong way if we're walking in love together. Love is always the answer. It's not always the easy answer. And it's not the answer that's going to get us to immediately agree. But love is always the answer, especially when there is difference or division or anger. And those kinds of things, the, the difference and division and anger, those aren't the real obstacles to love. The real obstacles to love are, are spoken about in 1 John that we just heard. The real obstacle to living in the love of God is fear. 1 John says the biggest fear is our own judgment. In other words, the greatest obstacle to living in God's love is the fear that maybe, maybe I'm not loved. Maybe I haven't done the right things to be loved. Maybe I'm not good enough to be lovable, not smart enough, not pretty enough, not strong enough. And while I know that far too many people think this way about themselves on a regular basis, I think there's also a lot of us for whom our fear of being unlovable is, is maybe subconscious. We don't even realize it. We don't think it but deep down below our regular thoughts, we fear. We fear we don't belong. We fear we're not pleasing others. And that fear has such a tight grip on us that it makes us sometimes unlovable. <laughs> so we cast people out. We divide up our communities. We judge other people, even maybe silently to ourselves. We treat others as less than human, whether because of the color of their skin or their lifestyle, their choices, their political views. And yet the word of God insists, beloved, let us love one another for love is from God. And it's that last little phrase that's the most important. Love is from God. It doesn't originate with us. And thank God, because if it did, we would put all kinds of conditions on love. But love is from God. We love because God first loved us. Love is possible because we have been filled with this unconditional holy love from the very moment that God first breathed dust and created into the dust and created us. Love is possible because God didn't abandon humanity when, when we aren't able to live in love, but instead sent Jesus to love us all the way to the cross. And he rose again so that in life and in death, in light and in darkness, in agreement and in disagreement, Though we cannot be perfect, God's perfect love abides in us. Love is possible today 
even with all of our division and hatred, because the Holy Spirit blows the breath of God, pure, holy love into us and shapes us into community, turning us outward then to love more, to love better, to love even those who are unlovable or unloving because God first loved us, even when we are unlovable or unloving. And this is the best, most simple, most important way to understand and describe God. God is love. The Bible says the only concrete image that we have of God is in the person of Jesus. And yet, I know other than that, many of us somewhere along the line have been given this image of, of God as this, this old man in the sky with a long beard enthroned in the clouds. I don't know, anybody else think of God that way? <laughs> Somewhere we've gotten this, this image of God as, as this almost this heavenly person watching over us. Personally, I've tried to wipe out those kind of images in my mind. And instead, other than Jesus, I try not to have an image that's personified anyway of God, except for whatever image love might take on. Whatever love looks like, that's God whether it's an energy or an action or a commitment or a choice or a relationship bond between people, especially between people who would have had otherwise no reason to love. That's God. God is love. And God loves you unconditionally and perfectly. Thanks be to God. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Let us pray. God of all fruitfulness, you abide in your church, and your church abides in you. 
Cleanse us by your word and give yourself to the whole church on earth so that it bears fruit and witnesses to your love. We pray for your leaders, for the leaders of your church, for bishops, for pastors, for deacons, for lay leaders, that they may all be led by your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have created the heavens and earth. As we wonder at the beauty of creation, help us to seek vital connections among all that depends on the earth for life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You rule the nations with justice and with love. So give the leaders of the earth assurance of your abiding love, that they be led not by fear, but with love for those they're called to serve. We pray for victims of the COVID-19 pandemic and for leaders to make wise decisions, especially in places like India where, where death right now is so pervasive and medical equipment is scarce. We pray for the many victims of what seem like never ending mass shootings just yesterday in Wisconsin. We pray for for law enforcement, and especially for Chief Tyser, Loveland's chief of police. Be present with them that their work may show your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have loved us first so that we can love others. We pray for all who are in need of your love, those who are poor, lowly, outcast, weak, those who live in fear. Provide for all the needs, all of their needs, especially as we lift up those who are close to this community of faith. For Shirley Kurtz, who's been hospitalized with COVID. Osmer, Pam Stevens' uncle. Arlene Meyer, who will be having a pacemaker put in on Thursday. Thomas Davis, Brenda Barrett's brother. Mike, Debbie and Paul Jonkis' brother-in-law with his recent transfer to hospice. For Linda, just Jessica Kuhn's mother, recovering after knee surgery. And Bruce, Janice Eller's friend, recently diagnosed with leukemia. For Harriet Colton's son, Steve, Dean Steine, Becky, Angie Elder's sister. For Cindy, Jean Elder's mom. For Marion, Phyllis Zimmerman's sister, and for Phyllis and Doug and Brenda in their travels today back from Iowa in their visit to Marion. For Janie as she prepares to have hand surgery in a few weeks. And for all of the family of Jennifer Schlegel who still struggles and mourns her loss. We lift up to you also those who are living with cancer. Arlene daughters, Arlene Meyer's daughter, Lois, for Don Arzelitis, for Christy Peach's brother, Brian, Del Milbrath, Mary Harris, Deb Steine's mother, for Glenda, Bonnie Showalter's mom, Tiffany, Evelyn Haber's great niece, Janine, Marty Schultz's niece, Lene, friend of Deborah Price and Marvin Huth, and for Jim, DJ Jurgensen's brother. Breathe your life and your healing in all of these and give wisdom to all who surround them in love to know how to care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for the gift of baptism, especially today as we celebrate the baptismal birthdays of the members of Zion this week. For Carol Schultz, Dennis Hart, Jacob Bray, Shyla Moore, Sharon Finch. Breathe your spirit of love into their lives that they may reflect that love to others. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks for the opportunity and for the freedom to worship both in person and in our homes. And today, especially, we give you thanks for, for David and Ryan as they begin their ministry with us here at Zion. Bless their gifts as they lead us to lift our voices of praise to you. Lord, in your mercy. 
in the hope of new life in Jesus Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Here on the first Sunday of the month, we are celebrating communion. Whether you are here with us or you are in your homes, hopefully in your home you have some supplies, bread or crackers, wine, or grape juice or water, and you can celebrate this with us. I invite you to hear these words as Christ's own promise to you to be present with you in all things, no matter where you go. And then after we pray the Lord's Prayer, then together I will invite you to receive Holy Communion wherever you are. We hear that promise that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so we pray together as our Lord taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So now I invite you to receive the bread, the wafer, the cracker, whatever you have that is the body of Christ. And hear these words, the body of Christ given for you. If you're with someone, you may want to share those words with them. And I invite you to receive the wine or the grape juice or the water with these words. For those of you who are in the sanctuary, I know this is the hardest part. <laughs> Getting this open. Hear these words of promise that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Friends in Christ, Christ, may this gift of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Again, we're so glad um, that you've been able to worship with us, especially in this time of, of distancing. Um, we, uh, we'll, we will be continuing, you know, um, we are increasing the number for the next few weeks here in May of, of how many can be in the sanctuary. So if you're at home and you've been thinking about joining us um, in person, please do consider and give us a call so that, um, so that you can uh, register and still, we still would like to, for people to call so we know who's coming and how many are coming and we know who's been here. Then in June, we will start having all of our worship services in our outdoor worship area. And at that point, we have no limit really on how many people can be here because we'll be outside and be able to space out. So, so do consider um, if you would like to join uh, us here in person.
During this time of virtual worship, the work and the ministry of the church has continued. And so if you would like to support this mission that we share, uh, we invite you to mail your offerings into the church office, office or you can go to our website, zionloveland.com, and you can give electronically um, on the Give tab across the top of the website. A couple other things that are going on that are coming up in the, in the life of this community. First of all, we're going to be offering Vacation Bible School um, in early June, June 7th through 11th. Um, it's going to be over at King of Glory, and children in preschool through fifth grade can register for their own to be, they'll be in uh, grouped in age groups, but also middle school and high school are invited to sign up, and they'll be part of their own group as well that are, that's going to be helping lead skits and large group times. We also have a number of spots if adults would like to volunteer to help with that, so um, in order, but in order to keep everyone safe and healthy, there are still a limited number of spaces. So be sure to sign up. There's a sign up online, or you can call the church office for help if you would like to help with Vacation Bible School. Zion has historically had a strong presence at Sierra's race against meningitis. In fact, for the last several years, we've had the, the largest team, right? Um, the Zion, the Laura's team. And so, um, we're going to, I don't know if they're doing that again this year, but we're going to, we're still going to, would like to support that. It's a great cause. We want to show our love and support for the Loken family who lost a daughter to meningitis years ago. And the Loken family supports those of us who want to run or walk by helping with the cost of registration. This year, the run walk is virtual, meaning um, we are not going to be gathering in one space all on the same day, but um, you can complete it anytime between June 12th and 20th. Um, but you do still need to register for it, and so you can register online or by calling the church office. But we would love for you to support this, be aware of meningitis, and um, what you can do to stop that. Then Nourish is a ministry uh, for adults and children of all ages, and this is going to be this Saturday at 6.30. It's a great time, especially I know for the adults to gather. When the weather is nice, we'll be out under the, the pergola, but uh, please know that you're invited this Saturday at 6.30. On Friday and Saturday during the day, there's an organization called A Little Help, and they organize a couple of times a year these days called A Little Kindness Days. And they, these days help connect people to help older adults so that they can stay in their homes and thrive in their homes. And so if you're able to help either Friday or Saturday with those little kindness days, let us know and we'll help you get connected to Steve Quartz, who's the director of A Little Help and one of the directors and, then a, and also a member here at Zion. I'm hoping to work with a crew on Saturday, so if you're interested in joining me, please let me know and we'll, we'll pull together a crew to provide a little help. Faith Day at the Rockies is August 8th, and I know that feels like an eternity away, um, but we do have to start, we have to know by May 16th so that the, we can reserve the tickets. What this means is we would love to have a, a number, a bunch of people from Zion and your family and friends, if you'd like uh, to join us on that for that baseball game in the afternoon on August 8th. And then after the game, there's a Christian band, Mercy Me, that's providing a concert. We're offering the, the tickets at a very reduced price of $10. And so we encourage you to, to let us know if you want one of those tickets with us. We'll all be sitting in a section together. But we only have a couple of weeks for that. And then um, finally, we know that a lot of people are, are still being impacted during this time, financially, emotionally, spiritually. So if you or someone you know is experiencing any kind of need, please let us know so that we can find ways to bless them and support them. It's been a blessing to be able to worship together. And so if you're here with us, I invite you to stand as you're able and receive a blessing. May the Lord's May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor 
and give you peace. Amen. Before the dismissal, I want you to know that the choir has been working on a gift that they want to share with David and Ryan. Um, not, not right now. No, you, you're still. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to provide the postlude for us. You're welcome to stay and hear that. But then after the postlude, we're going to go uh, out. If you'd like to hear, the choir wants to, to offer a musical gift and contribution. If you're here and would like to They'll just be right outside under the pergola. And for those of you who are joining us by Zoom, um, we're going to do our best to have it mic'd up. And so you'll be able to hear us if you'd like to stay on for that as well. But now we go forth with the dismissal. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord as you reach out to a loved one. Thanks be to God.
Sorry. <laughs> I think you're good. Did you get it? Yeah. You you? Well, and then we're going to spotlight. All right. <laughs> So 